How many of you are familiar with this Apple product? Since its inception, Apple's design philosophy has been about making advanced technology friendly and easy to use. And that thinking extended even to diagnostic tools like this. In 1991, Apple introduced the TechStep, exclusively to Apple resellers for $1,000 US dollars. And what made the TechStep unique was that it allowed the technician to connect this device to Macintosh computers and SCSI hard drives using external connectors without ever having to open the computer's plastic case or pull out the circuit board. So let's take a look at it now. Inside we have the TechStep manuals and software. We have the actual TechStep device itself. And we have a variety of cables including ADB. We have a SCSI cable. We have a 1 8 inch um, audio cable. And we have a couple serial cables. Also included inside is the Apple AC adapter. And we have ROM cartridges. What you're looking at here is a complete TechStep set that I purchased from eBay uh, about 2006. And for the most part, it's in pristine condition, uh, except for one of the manuals, which has a bit of water damage on it. But I believe that because none of the other manuals and software or anything had water damage on it, that uh, only this manual must have been separated uh, from the rest, which is a good thing. Uh, it includes in this particular pack here, uh, the Apple TechStep packing list packing list says it includes the US version of everything, uh, which means that this AC adapter is 120 volts, 60 hertz, and there are actually multiple adapters for Europe and even for Japan. And I'm actually here in Japan now, I live in Japan, and uh, this US version works fine. And they made a special Japan version because in some parts of Japan, uh, Japan uses 50 hertz. But this is 60 hertz, and even though it says 120 volts, it will work on Japan's 100 volt AC power. So I've tested that. Uh, normally your tech step will come, if you find them on eBay or if you want to buy one yourself, it will only come with two ROMs. And you can see in the actual tech step unit itself, here on the right side are the ROM slots. And it includes uh, SCSI hard drive and CPU test volume one. And it's uh, fairly easy to install and remove these ROM packs. Doesn't matter which port you put them into. And I actually have an additional two ROM packs that came with this unit. And that covers the CPU test volume two and uh, CPU test volume three. So the CPU tests are covering Macintosh computers. Uh, the CPU test volume 1 is the classic SE, SE30, Macintosh 2, 2X, and CX. Uh, the volume 2 covers the LC, LC2, and the classic 2. And volume 3 of the CPU test covers the Macintosh 2 CI, SI, VI, VX, and the PF600. So, the SCSI hard drive tests, uh, of course, diagnose SCSI. And if you haven't seen my recent video yet on the recapping of the Macintosh HD 20SC, you might want to check that out. But that, uh, this particular ROM cartridge will cover that SCSI hard drive as well, which means you don't have to connect it to a computer. You simply connect that external hard drive directly to this tech step, and we'll actually show that to you in a few moments, and you can diagnose and test the drive, even scan for bad blocks, all without a computer, because technically this uh, is the computer. So uh, it includes what's the what's included list, and it includes a one year limited warranty. I believe we're a bit out of warranty. <laughs> and it includes a, well, registration card, which hasn't ever been filled out. And you know, if I wasn't such an avid collector and wanting to keep everything stock, I, I think it would be fun to actually fill this out and mail it in. The mailing address is 20525 uh, Mariani Avenue in Cupertino, California. I believe that's still where Apple's located. 
uh, attention Apple Tech Step Marketing Manager. So <laughs> probably don't have one of those right now, but it might be fun to, you know, they probably just throw it away, but um, might be fun at the same time. What, after all these years, somebody's sending it in? Yes, yes, somebody might actually do that. Uh, we also have uh, uh, the user guide here. We have the troubleshooting guide. And these are just wonderful manuals because they're spiral bound, right? So you can open up your manual, fold it back, and read it without worrying about creasing the pages. It's, it's really quite incredible. These, these are uh, full color manuals, so you've got color pictures uh, in them as well. Uh, I'm not going to go through the entire manual, but uh, basically it says uh, on the introduction page, what is Apple Tech Step? And it says Apple Tech Step is a handheld tool that tests Apple products via the product's ex external interface ports driven by a Motorola MC68HC11 8-bit single chip microcontroller. Now a microcontroller, for those of you who don't know, it's like a CPU, but it has more features. Some of you may be familiar with microchip PIC, P-I-C, microcontrollers. Well, this is a microcontroller from Motorola that runs at the heart of it. Apple Tech Step, I'm going to continue here, displays te test options and results on a 4 by 16 character LCD display and a 15 key keypad allows the technician to select tests and test options. Apple Tech Step runs on an AC adapter or standard 9 volt battery. So I'll stop there. Um, so we can see here on the side where the slots are. That's for your ROM slots. On the opposite side, you have your power switch and uh, you have connectors. And on the back, you have this. This is where most of your connections will be made. You have your SCSI port. Uh, you have your printer port. You have modem. Yes, there was once a thing called a modem back in the day. And we have our ADB and you can even diagnose audio. Apple originally created the tech step to be flexible and expandable over time. And that's why this entire port pack backside is able to pull out so that you could replace this in theory with different ports over time. Unfortunately, Apple never expanded the tech step. So as far as I know, this is the only port pack that was available. But uh, on the inside, you can see I've got a nine volt battery in there. I would advise you nine volt batteries don't tend to be as bad as the lithium batteries you find in old Macs that explode and leak all over the place. But still, if you buy one of these tech steps, I would advise if you do use a battery, be sure to take it out and don't just leave it in there for years on end uh, because all batteries can age and leak over time. But uh, that's all that's inside. It's just a place to put the nine volt battery and has the connector. So, uh, we'll insert this back in. Basically what you would do is you would put in your ROM pack. So I'll go ahead and put in the standard packs. Again, if you buy, uh, these are marked A and B. So I'll put the CPU tests in A, it doesn't matter, but I'll just uh, slide it in here. And then I will put the SCSI hard drive tests in B. And it tells you precisely in the manual, no, don't force it in. Be careful and all that so they are properly installed and of course on the back side of the tech step it's uh, talking about made in the USA now that's pretty incredible obviously President Trump is trying to restore some of that but yes back in the day we were a manufacturing country um, I'm saying that living here in Japan but as a US citizen I can say that right we one day we, we at one point in time actually made things in the USA and the tech step was no exception uh, so I have the battery inside and so if I flip the power switch on it shows some initial tests that it runs and then it's showing here that uh, it's listing out the classic, the SC, the SC30, uh, the Macintosh 2, 2X and CX and you can uh, select those by pushing one of the buttons that's associated with them but of course we have nothing connected here right now so I won't do that. Instead, we will keep looking through the materials here. We already looked at the uh, user guide. Uh, you can kind of see some of the water damage that's on this. Uh, this particular guide is basically for uh, troubleshooting. And, and in fact, it even tells you how to use a Macintosh computer, obviously a vintage one, uh, to diagnose the tech step. So not only can you use the tech step to diagnose the Mac, but you can also use the Mac to diagnose and confirm 
if your tech step is in working order. So that's what this drive covers, or this uh, book covers. And then of course we have the software at the end here. Um, we have two disks here. These two three and a half inch floppies are actual blanks, 1.4 megabytes and uh, 800K. So if you need to uh, write something to disk or just test a floppy drive, you have th these blank disks that you can use. And then at the bottom you have your actual software, uh, the getting started. And by the way, um, uh, getting started and the Apple's tech step test version 1.0. In the description down below this video, I'll put lots of links and information for you uh, because on these floppies, you have, even if you don't have a tech step, there's a hypercard stack that shows you how to use the tech step. And even if you don't have a tech step, it's kind of fun to use that. So I'll link that uh, for you in the description below so that you can test it out yourself. So I think the next thing we want to do is take actual look at that hy hypercard stack so you can kind of see what's on it because on the hypercard stack, uh, it includes information that's not in the user guide. In, in, in other words, it actually contains more information on what you need to do, step one and so on, uh, to connect the cables properly uh, to your computer and get started. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Okay, here we have the software that I copied off floppy to my hard disk. This is the hypercard stack I was telling you about. There's a link to this software down in the text description below. Also inside this folder are the actual uh, test files that you would launch if you're diagnosing a Mac. And you don't need to do that if you're diagnosing a hard drive, SCSI hard drive only. And this is the report generator here. So let's go ahead and launch the HyperCard stack. And again, you can launch this even without a tech step just to uh, get a feel for it. And it even has a little simulator inside, which is pretty neat to play around with. And we've got some 3D animation here. There's a lot of things to go through, but we're not going to go through all of them. In fact, we're just going to jump into attaching the Apple Tech Step here. It works just like the internet, you know, HyperCard being the precursor to the internet. This tells you, um, uh, well, just a little bit about what I've already said. Uh, it gives you a nice graphical representation of how you need to connect the Tech Step to something like an SC30, which has two ADB ports. And then, of course, if you have a machine that only has one, it shows that as well. Uh, it also shows how to hook it up to a hard disk only, and you can see there's no computer that's necessary. You just plug it right in, uh, and that would use the cable that came with your hard disk 20, or hard disk uh, whatever the SC series you may have, because it needs a Centronics uh, connector at the end, whereas the TechStep SCSI cable has the same 50-pin connector at both ends. Okay, and then uh, we can see how to attach the tech step if you've got a Macintosh and the external hard drive and it shows you that configuration as well and then we can see uh, this is the actual usage of it and of course what you want to do is the first step here make absolutely sure that all the power is down to your Mac and to the tech step to begin and then you're of course after that's everything's powered down you attach the cables and then it says you need to make sure your ROM packs uh, are the appropriate ones and powered in uh, or and plugged in correctly and then you would power on your tech step either through the 9 volt battery inside or through the AC adapter and then it gives you a little simulation here uh, that you can play around with and you can follow uh, the setup here it says uh, type key 4 so we'll go ahead and do that and if you want to go back you can you can actually do that and then it says 4 so uh, key four is uh, corresponding to the Macintosh 2. And then these are all the settings for the Macintosh 2. If you use the down arrow, you get another screen of settings. You use the down arrow again, you get another screen of settings. And then you can go up arrow, up arrow, and so on. And this pretty much guides you through uh, what you need to do. So it's kind of fun to play around with this to get an idea of how the uh, how it actually works and you can type in you know buttons here and it'll tell you these are obviously fake but it gives you an example of what the normal voltage should be and okay you've measured measured 4.92 and that's kind of what you're going to see in the actual test and that's pretty much all i need to show you about this because you can check the rest out for yourself but again this supplements the paper user guides 
to give you a bit more information and hand-holding, especially if you want to generate logs or you need to troubleshoot or use a Mac to, uh, to diagnose your tech step. And all of that is explained within this HyperCard stack. And again, if we quit out of here, uh, we can go back to the desktop and there are cases where when you're diagnosing a computer, you're going to need to launch uh, these programs. If you launch these uh, test setups, you would need to, of course, have your uh, tech step uh, connected. And we don't have anything connected right now. So that's the software. Next, we're going to show you how to diagnose a Apple HDSC with only the tech step attached. And here we are with our Apple HD20SC, uh, which again is a SCSI hard disk. You're not going to connect the HD20, which is a serial hard drive. This is the SCSI hard drive. And this is actually the SCSI cable that comes with the tech step, but we can't use this cable on this particular hard drive because it requires a Centronix connector. Okay. So since this hard drive already has its own cable, we will just use that cable and not use this one. I'll just attach the cable back here. And then we'll go ahead and power on the tech step. I have the battery inside, so I don't need the AC adapter. Power switch is right here on the left side. Now, it comes up with slot A. Now, there are two ROMs in here. I have the SCSI hard drive test ROM in there and also the CPU tests and it will come up with the CPU ROM, but that is not what we want. We want the SCSI ROM. And how do you choose the ROM? Well, you have to choose the asterisk, which is the shift key, and then you'll choose ROM B. And then it says ROM in slot B, SCSI hard drive tests. And then it asks you uh, which uh, test you want to run. And of course, we haven't switched on the power yet, so we need to do that now. And at the main screen here, we can see it's checking, uh, you, you can check SCSI termination power, uh, SCSI termination check. Uh, so we can actually do that. It's just a very fast check here, and it says it passed because it's terminated. If we go back, um, uh, we can even do number one, SCSI termination power, and it tells you the voltage level there. Actual 4.86 volts. Normal is 4.16, but it says 4.86 is just fine. Now I recap this particular power supply, so I don't know if that's why it's a little bit higher than normal, but actually the nominal uh, should be about close to five volts. It says normal is 4.16, but anyway, it says okay, so that means it's within range. Uh, we can do a bus scan, number three, and it says that this is ID zero. We're not gonna do all the tests, but just to show you, it's got hard drive check, hard drive check and fix, fix being it's going to do something destructive. Since I have d good data on here, I don't want to do that, so I won't do that test, but we can just do the hard drive check. It's pretty fast. Um, the, there are actually a variety of checks in here, but uh, you can do number two, which is uh, random seek and read. And it test, t test pass just fine. And then it's got other options. You can go to the next page. I press the down arrow. It's got the right test, which is destructive, so we won't do that. Hard drive self-test, might as well do that. Hard drive self-test um, doesn't take too long. See, it says it passed. And then we can do a bad block scan. Now, that's going to take a long time, so I won't do it all. But just to start it off, you can see that it's going, and the LED is red there. And if at any time we want to stop, we just press the stop key, which is right above the asterisk key here. And it goes ahead and stops, and then we can get out of here and asterisk to home and go back. And that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it for this. You've got other tests that you can run, but you can just look at the documentation if you get your test step and uh, do those for yourself on any SCSI hard drive. Next, we're going to diagnose this computer with the tech step. Everything, as you can see here, with this rat's nest of wires is connected between the back of the tech step to the back of this Macintosh SE30. Now, this SE30 is in its stock condition. Don't mind this little connector back here. That's just a bracket I didn't remove. All of the PDS cards have been removed. Uh, this is a stock 16 megahertz CPU in there. Everything is stock. In, in fact, I swapped out all of the capacitors in the analog board, the Sony power supply, and also on the motherboard. It's fully tested and in a known working good condition. The only upgrade it has is just RAM. I have 32 megabytes of RAM inside. 
So we're going to use the tech step uh, with the appropriate CPU ROM cartridge inside uh, to diagnose this computer and then that will show you what a known good computer looks like. So both of these machines are powered off and the first thing we want to do is power on the tech step. We can see we have one problem here that needs to be resolved. The LED is lit. I've been using this tech step a lot off camera so the internal 9 volt battery has run down. When the LED is solid on it means the battery is low. You'll also notice here that it's difficult to read the LCD and the LCD dims slightly when the battery voltage is low. So what I'm going to do is plug in the AC adapter. I'll just for good measure just turn it off and plug it in. I'll switch it on. And you can see now the screen is much easier to read and the LED turned off. So we'll do the rest of our tests with it plugged in. So the SC30 is still switched off. What we're going to do is push number three to choose SC30, and then we want to go into test mode. Okay, and it's telling us what we need to do. Please turn on uh, the CPU, which is the SC30. So I'll go ahead and do that. And as you'll see, something which uh, appears to be a little bit worrying, uh, the sad Mac error code, but actually this is correct. When working with a tech step, it's supposed to say at the top row 000 and then F at the end, 000 and then A at the end. That is correct for an SC30. And now we can proceed with our tests. For example, if we do number one, that's power. And it's saying here that um, anything above 4.8 is normal. And the actual tested voltage here is uh, 4.86, 4.84, so that's considered to be okay. And if we back out of here, we can see we've got logic tests and drive tests. Let's go into logic test number three. And if we do all tests, which is number one, it will not show all of the individual errors, assuming there are any. Uh, to get those errors, we would have to do the tests individually, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. But uh, just for, for now, we'll go ahead and do all tests. So I'll push number one. And you can see it's going through, it's doing the RAM check and so on, the uh, logic board tests, data tests. It's now testing the uh, memory, which again, I have 32 megabytes of memory in this computer. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than the stock RAM would. And uh, it has a full batch of tests, including the video system on the SC30. By the way, as it's going through these tests, I'd like to mention that if you have your PRAM battery on the logic board, it doesn't matter. Whether it's in or out, the test results for the SC30 will be the same, and that's mentioned in the documentation. So you can go ahead and test your SC30 with or without that PRAM battery. And I mention that because a lot of you may have your PRAM battery removed because you're worried if you forget and leave it in there, it's going to explode and mess up your circuit board, your motherboard over time. So uh, not a problem whether it's in or out. And now it's running through the video test, as you can see. And even though you won't be able to hear anything, you can see that it does test the sound because I have that cable plugged in. And here it is, all tests passed. So actually for the full batch of tests, it did it fairly quickly. And then we can click back and uh, go back to our main screen here. And we can go back again there's other tests that can be run, including the drive, but uh, this drive is not your hard disk. This is the floppy drive. So it's saying that it found one floppy drive, but not the second. And you'll know that uh, the SE, not the SE30, but the SE has the option to have two floppies. So that's why it's saying here 
uh, number one and number two. So if we were to choose number one, then it's going to say, what kind of disk would you like to test? And since this is an SE30, it can test all of these. It could test the 800K disks or uh, the 100, the 1.4 uh, MFM. So this is where your uh, included service disks come in handy, assuming you don't have other disks already. You don't have to use these, but I'll just go ahead and do the 800K test, which is number one. And it says to insert a writable disk. And then it tells me I have to manually start it. So that's pushing number one. And it has to download the test from the text step to the computer before it begins. There we are, the test passed. We can back out of here. Now, let's say we want to save the test that we've, we've run, we can save these to the ROM. And you might say, what? <laughs> ROM is read-only memory. How can we do that? Well, actually, it's not completely ROM. There's a ROM portion and a writable portion to it. So to save uh, the log file to the ROM cartridge, what we want to do is push this asterisk key at the very bottom left. And then we want to push number seven for save. And it's going to say, save log file to ROM A. Enter log ID number. So you can put whatever ID number you want. You could call it one, two, three. You could even call it one if you want. And then it says to accept it, you have to push the down arrow. And it says, do you want to replace the existing log in the ROM pack? And yes, we do. So we push number one. It says it saved it as log one, two, three. And so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, stop these tests and then boot from the SE30 so that we can access the log that we just saved. To access the log, I want to shut down my SE30. I'm going to go ahead and shut off my text step. And I need to disconnect the text step from the Mac. So I'll go ahead and remove these. And now what we want to do is we have to connect a serial cable between a special serial port on the text step to the printer port or the modem port on the back of our computer. Okay, I've attached an ADB keyboard and mouse, which are necessary. And I'm going to use one of the cables. It has the little Apple logo. Those are the serial cables. ADB have a different logo on them. And there's a little dot on this cable here which tells me uh, which port it's connected to on the back of the Mac, which is, in this case, the printer port. I've chosen to use that. You can use the other modem port if you want. And you can see here, it plugs in on the side right next to the AC adapter connector, okay? So this is important. If you connect to any of them on the back, then it's not going to work to read out the logs. This port on the side is specifically for the reading out of the logs stored inside your TechStep ROM cartridges. So now I'm going to switch on the power on the Mac, and it will boot off its internal hard drive normally. So the Mac is booted up. I want to do the report generator. And it's telling you you can type in information. That was back in the day when you wanted to type in the customer information. We don't need to do that. It's going to say which port. I have it set up at the printer port. And to actually receive the log, we need to switch on the text step. And then we have to initiate the receive log. And it says it's waiting. So what we have to do is send it. And to do that, we need to push this asterisk and then number four to send. And it's going to say send log to Mac from wrong A. And we want to say uh, send the saved log, number two. 
and then you can see on the screen it says it's receiving and here is the log with a pretty crazy uh, date and time I'll expand it out here because my date and time weren't set right but um, that's on the Mac side and it says ROM pack A CPU tests and it's telling you errors the hyphen means no errors it's showing that I have 32 megabytes of RAM and it's showing that the voltage that it measured was 4.86 uh, if we just go down through you'll see it did these tests one time you'll see that if we go back here it says number of runs so that means you can do more than uh, one run and of course at the very end we did a separate 800k test one time no errors so as you can see it ran through all the logic tests and then we did the 800k test so this was in one session that we did and it's all saved to the log and so that's how you uh, read out the logs from your tech step very easy now we're going to do another batch of tests this time the individual tests with our tech step but this time we're going to use our PDS cards I've got an accelerator and an Ethernet card here so I'm going to take these cards and I'm going to put them into the SC30. Now that everything is connected, my PDS cards um, and my tech step, I'll go ahead and power on the tech step. And then, of course, uh, I need to choose SE30, which is number three, and I'm going to initiate the test mode, which is number two, and it's telling me to power on the computer, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here we are at the main screen. We'll go ahead and do number one for power. We can see that the power is lower than it was uh, when we tested the first time because we have PDS cards in there, actually two that are stacked in addition to the hard drive and other things that are really pulling down on the power supply, so it says it's a bit low. However, I've tested this machine thoroughly. It never locks up. It doesn't have any problems. So even at this 4.72 volts, uh, I know from experience that it is stable. Next, we'll back out of this and uh, go ahead and do the logic test. This time, we're not going to do all tests. We're going to do them one at a time. So let's do number two. This is the SE30 stock ROM. It says it passed. Do number three. This is checking the first 33K of the 32 megabytes of RAM. That passed. We'll do number four, which is checking the actual RAM size. Confirmed, 32 megabytes. Do number five. That's the uh, address bus tests. And those tests passed. Then we're going to do number six, which is testing the SIMs. And keep in mind, we have these uh, non-stock PDS cards in there. So uh, Apple technically does not support that with the tech step and it cannot guarantee that all the tests will pass due to the presence of those boards. And so that's what I'm trying to show you now, what tests will pass in an SE30 with PDS cards and what will not pass. Keep in mind that on your SE30, you may have different PDS cards than I have, and therefore what you're seeing here on this video may differ slightly or even substantially. Test passed, so we'll back out of this. And uh, we did all these. Let's down arrow, do the video. You're not able to see what's on the computer screen, but it's the same set of patterns that you saw on our first test. And when this particular test is done, it's going to tell you that the amount of RAM it has in this SC30 for dedicated to the video, 64K, and that all passed. Next, we're going to do the VIA chip. That passed. Next is the clock, number three. That passed. Next, we'll do the PRAM number four, and it's asking you, do you want to do a destructive or non-destructive test? Obviously, the destructive test is going to test whether it can retain uh, memory or not, whether you can write to it or not, but we're not going to do that because I don't want to reset those settings. We'll just do the non-destructive number one, and it tests it uh, fairly quickly and says, not only did it pass, but I have something saved in the PRAM, which I do, so that is correct. Next, we're going to back out of here and then do the five SCC test. This is testing our serial. Now, this test usually fails when you have PDS cards in the SC30, so we're not going to be surprised here unless it actually passes. <laughs> Without the uh, cards in there, remember the first test we did, this uh, got a passing mark. 
And of course it failed. It says on the modem line it didn't like something. So that's the influence of our PDS cards back out of here. And then we're going to do SCSI. Now SCSI is doing the SCSI chip on the actual SE30 logic board and that passed. Next we're going to do the down arrow to get more features. We got number one, the swim chip, integrated WAS machine, that's IWM, and that went okay. Number two, remember this FPU, we've got uh, the SE30 stock FPU, but we've also got the accelerator card with its own 68882 FPU. So I'm not sure which it's testing, but uh, it passes, even with the accelerator. Next is sound. You won't be able to hear anything, but it's testing through the sound cable. Uh, sometimes this test will fail because of the influence of, yes, and we can see that um, PDS cards influence that, so it failed. Number four is ADB. And both ADB ports tested just fine. And that concludes these logic tests. Uh, again, there's number four, the drive. We know the floppy drive's good, so I'm not going to do that. If we go down, we can see you can verify the CPU, number one. I'll go, go ahead and do that, and lo and behold, it is a Macintosh SE30. Number two is the SCSI termination. We can turn that off by pushing number two, since it's off now. And then we do number three, which is going to give us the SCSI menu. Termination power, let's check that, number one. It says uh, we're getting some pretty good voltage here higher than the 4.16 it's expecting. So if we back out of here, we can see the termination check. This is going to be my active terminator on the cable that I have in there, and it says the test passed. SCSI bus scan, we'll go ahead and do that. And it says my internal hard drive is number four, and if we type number four on the keyboard, which I'm doing right now, it's going to tell us about the hard disk, which is absolutely correct. It's a Quantum LPS540S. Neat. Back out of here, back out of here, we'll go down. Uh, SCSI 6, that's the ID of the machine, we won't do that. SCSI bus reset, no reason to do that, so I'm not going to do it. And that concludes our SCSI tests. That is all of the tests on the tech step. And again, the power supply, well, it's a little bit low, but it's still working. So if I want to, I can save another uh, log, asterisk, save. This time I'll call it 3, 2, 1, and go down arrow. Do I want to replace the log I have already saved in there? Well, okay, a number one. And it saved it in my ROM pack. So here's the log that I downloaded. Of course, I added in the information here, typed it in with just basically like a word processor so I can add that in. Uh, I had those two PDS cards installed. We see the failure that it got for the SCC, and um, I ran the test more than once. Um, and they also got the um, sound test failed. So our voltage, you know, was a tad bit low because of the um, PDS cards. But other than that, uh, it's surprisingly few errors, even though optional cards are not supported. Now we're going to use the tech step for what it was truly intended to diagnose a motherboard that is known defective. Uh, I have moved the 32 megabytes of RAM out of the motherboard I just tested. So this is known good RAM. This is a known good stock SE30 uh, ROM SIM that was also pulled from my known good working motherboard. And this CPU is also tested to be good. It's socketed so I could easily remove it. I had actually recapped this board. Uh, if you look, you can see the uh, tantalum capacitors that are yellow in color that are all around here. I re recapped it, uh, but unfortunately, even after my recapping job, it still didn't work. And I sent it off to uh, someone at the 68K MLA who's a little bit more savvy about these problems than I am. He replaced some things and apparently he got it working, but when he shipped it back to me, it, it, I couldn't get it to work. So I'm not sure what's wrong. We're going to use the tech step to diagnose it and see what the result is. And here's how it responds. We get the chimes of death, and we get the horizontal uh, shimashi mak as if it wasn't recapped at all. So let's diagnose it with a tech step. 
Well, I now have the tech step connected, the computer is powered on, and the tech step was able to successfully communicate with the Mac, although as you can see, it's still in its locked up condition. We are now in the logic tests, and if we do number two, we can see that the ROM passed, so it is communicating, and we can verify that, well, at least the ROM is good. If we do the RAM check, however, we see that it failed, and it failed quite fast too. It says press zero for more information, and if we push this, we see there's an X here uh, next to SIM1. And in the actual um, guide here, it explains such errors further, uh, saying that the X indicates a faulty DRAM SIM or module, but actually we know that the RAM is good, <clears throat> and therefore it's obviously some kind of circuit board trace connection or the SIM holder itself that could be bad and that needs to be investigated which we're not going to do in this video because that would take a long time but this is telling us that for SIM um, for the there's actually four pairs here you can see one two three and four and one of the two is has an X next to it and the other two are fine so it is showing that it can read some of the sims, but not all. And here in the manual, it's actually showing that, um, very similar to what we have here, where the X indicates the fault area. And so that's why the RAM actually, on or the motherboard itself in the area of the RAM would need to be checked. Now the question marks, it says here, indicate a RAM location that's not tested by this particular test, so three and four are nothing to worry about. If we go back and uh, look at RAM size number four, of course it's going to say misconfigured uh, because when there is, when the tech step anyway detects that there's more RAM in one bank than another, um, as it says here, misconfigured appears if bank A contains smaller SIMs than bank B. So if it can't read one SIM, then it's not able to confirm all of the RAM in a particular bank, and therefore it's going to say misconfigured. And also in the manual, this, sorry about the water damage, but there's nothing I can do about that. The SC30, uh, it's saying one, two, three, and four. So these are the first pair, second, third, and fourth pair for a total of two, four, six, eight slots. And if we go back and do the BS RAM again and look at zero, it says in number one. So that would mean all the way at the back. And that would need to be investigated. Now, there are other tests that can be run, but uh, actually I did run those tests and a lot of them do fail. So it's not clear if RAM is really the only problem with this particular motherboard, but I would say that the investigation would need to start with the RAM. Uh, for example, if we do the SWIM chip, SWIM integrated WAS machine, uh, you get kind of these timeout errors for some of the other tests, uh, FPU, and then it, it jumps out of test mode. Uh, so when it jumps out of test mode, you have to switch off the machine. And then it says to switch it back on again. And then it tries to link up and run the test. But in many cases, it will fail. And I think it has something to do with the, uh, possibly the RAM problem that we've seen. And so this is basically showing you how the tech step is assisting um, a troubleshooting technician on what to do. Of course, Apple, they're not going to fix the circuit board. They would just basically swap the whole circuit board out back in the day. But since these things are no longer made, um, we need to diagnose these ourselves trace by trace sometimes. But anyway, you can see here that the it's not able to complete uh, many of these tests. And so again, it would have to, the RAM would need to be examined, the actual RAM holders. Uh, before we could take it to the next step. And that brings to a close our look at the Apple Tech Step. Be sure to read through the text description below 
because it contains a lot of useful information, including a link to that HyperCard stack I was showing you, which, especially if you don't have a text app, can provide a lot of useful information. If you don't know what a text description is, just look below this video. You'll see some text that I have written, and you'll also see a couple words, if you're on a desktop computer, that say, show more. Click on that, poop, it drops down. If you're on a mobile device, like an iPhone, there's the little ch down caret mark. It's kind of hard to see, but if you click on that, it also drops the text description down. Again, a lot of useful information there. Uh, now, if you don't already have a text step, after watching this video, you probably will want one. And my advice to you would be, go on eBay. They pop up from time to time there. And if you look on eBay and just can't find one, then my suggestion would be, sign up for the 68K MLA forum. Also, there's a Facebook group dedicated to vintage Macs where people sell things, uh, sometimes trade for things. And links to those uh, places are also given down in the text description below. By the way, I was reading through our Facebook group recently and one individual commented that he has multiple text steps, including brand new, never opened in the box text steps sitting in his storage. So I'd like to say, folks, if you have unused vintage computing equipment, especially if you have more than one piece of something and you're not going to use it for parts, please consider either selling it or donating it to someone who could put it to good use. Because there are a lot of people out there like that. Lastly, uh, I just like to say this is the first time I've actually asked this in any of my videos, but if you like this video, please consider subscribing and also consider taking a few seconds to click on that thumbs up button because those few simple clicks let me know your feelings. It, let me know, it lets me know if I've done something right. It lets me know if you want to see more videos like this one. Uh, further information on how to support this channel is also mentioned in the text description below. So thanks for watching and happy troubleshooting.